Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, dear viewers, joining us on our live program here and there, our Ramadan special for 2017. Dear viewers, as you are aware, we have two primary aims for this program. Our first one is to talk about Ramadan and also sub subject, a subject that brings us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second aim in our program is linked to our name here and there. We are talking about Muslim communities around the world. We've had a look at Indonesia, we've had a look at Nigeria. We also went to the United States and today inshallah we're going to be moving to a country inside of Europe and that is France. Now my dear brothers and sisters one may ask why are we talking about Muslims from around the world? First and foremost is because it's from our Iman. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he told us that a person does not have complete faith until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. So it's from our faith that we are concerned with people's affairs, that we are concerned with the things they are doing, they, whether they are suffering or whether they are progressing, we should be concerned with their affairs. Not just that, but the Prophet وسلم, he also said in another hadith that a, a, a person who does not show concern for the Muslims is not from amongst the Muslims. So it's our aim, inshallah, with this program to unite the Muslims, to bring us under the fold of Islam collectively and to share our worries and our concerns. Let me share with you one small story and then we'll go into our discussion talking about the concept of unity, brotherhood, looking at France, looking at the Muslims in France as well. In the time of Umar ibn Khattab, there were two men who dragged a young boy into the court of Omar. And they said to Omar that this man, this young boy has killed our father. So they wanted retribution for, for, for his crime. So Omar turned to this young man and he said to him, did you kill their father? So the young boy, he admits, said, yes, I did, but it was an accident. I was walking across with my camel through the father's land and the father, he threw a stone at my camel. And this stone hit the eye of my camel and I could see the pain that the camel was going through. So I became angry. So I picked up the stone and I threw it back. When I threw it back, I hit their father in the head and I didn't mean to, but the father passed away. On that note, Omar turned to the two men and said, it was a mistake. Can you forgive this young boy? The two said, no, we want our retribution. So Omar said to the young man that we're going to apply the penal code, which is a life for a life. On that note, he said to him, do you have anything you would like to say or anything you would like to do before we execute the order? This young boy, he responded to Omar and he said to him that, yes, give me three days. My father, before he passed away, he left behind a treasure. I want to go get this treasure and give it to my brother before you implement uh, the rules. Then this young boy, he went away and he came back after three days. When he came back, uh, and, uh, prior to that, this young boy was in the court of Omar, sorry. And in the court, Omar said to him that before you go, because he thought he was just leaving for the sake of getting away from the punishment. On that note, Omar turned to him and said to him, do you have a guarantor that will guarantee that you will return? And if you don't return, then he will have to uh, pay the price. And at that note, Abu Dhar al Ghafari, he raised his hand in his court and he said, I will vouch for this person to come back. This boy goes away for three days and then he returns. Upon his return, everybody is waiting to see what is going to take place. Abu Dhar al Ghafari, he is on the verge of having him taking the penal code for him, uh, uh, for, for the boy being late. When the boy comes, the Omar asks the young man, you could have not come, you could have stayed away, but why did you come back? The young boy responds and he says that I was afraid that when a Muslim gave his word, somebody will say that he did not fulfill his promise. Then Omar turned to Abu Dhar al-Ghafari and he said to him, why did you put your neck on the line? And he said that when I saw this young boy in need and no Muslim was helping him, I felt scared that on the day of judgment, Allah will say there was a Muslim in need and nobody helped him. And on that note, the two men saw the piety of these two boys and they forgave uh, the young man from that penal code. My dear brother and sister, we're going to be talking about unity, we're going to be talking about brotherhood. So before we do that, let's go around the table, see who we have in the <coughs> studio, and then we can get into our discussion. 
If I can turn to my <coughs> right, we have with us Brother Omar, our co-presenter, Brother Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum as-salamu wa barakatuh, Brother Junaid. Thank you for the beautiful story. It's so heart touching. Thank you so much. And I also thank dear viewers for joining us. And for tonight, we're going to talk about France, inshallah. I'm going to just say like two points about France before, inshallah, going uh, with the table, inshallah. Well, I would like to say that France has more than 17 million people that live in the country. And the mainland France is divided into 27 regions. And these are divided into 100 and one departments. And uh, the borders, uh, the countries that share uh, borders with France is Switzerland, Luxembourg, Germany, uh, and also Italy, Spain, uh, and uh, Belgium. So, and as a last point, maybe for fun, um, that French was the official language of England for 300 years, okay. <laughs> from <laughs> the year 1066 to 1362. <laughs> we are going to have like uh, something to, to comment on it, Brother Jade, inshallah, and our guest, inshallah. Okay, inshallah. So before, inshallah, talking about this, we have also want to introduce uh, Brother Ali. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. And uh, thank you, Brothers Junaid and Omar and your viewer. As always, you're welcome to join us tonight. We look forward to your telephone calls for this tonight's <laughs> episode, Looking at Islam in France. We have uh, a guest here who is Algerian and French. Uh, and uh, there are lots of questions. When, they, when I learned that we were going to be talking about France tonight, I, they had, I had a number of questions that I wanted to get to about the history of Islam in France, uh, the graves that were found uh, dated to the 8th century uh, last year. Very exciting. Uh, one of the only uh, European countries that has Im imposed a ban against the hijab. And then, of course, last year, all this stuff about Burkini and Nice. Lots to talk about. The unfortunate thing is that we don't have time. Tonight, we're down to about 40 minutes, and we apologize for starting late tonight. Let's go ahead and introduce our guest uh, for this evening. Uh, this is Brother Mahdi uh, Zidani. Assalamu alaikum and welcome. Alaikum salat Thank you very much. I'm really happy to be with you guys tonight. It's our pleasure to have you. And congratulations, you just completed uh, exams, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, at uh, yeah. Al Azhar? Yeah, yeah, well, All right, inshallah, you'll get back good results inshallah. and uh, benefit the Muslim Ummah with all that you have been studying and learning, inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. So please, uh, the first question is always uh, that we're interested in is about the arrival of Islam <coughs> uh, to uh, France. Uh, as I just said, last year, the newspapers announced the discovery by French scientists on coastal France on the Mediterranean side, uh, the three graves that they uh, believe very strong, strong evidence that they were Muslims dated to the, uh, the eighth century, the early eighth century, that's the 700s. And they know that they were Muslims by uh, DNA analysis of their remains, but also the fact that they were lying on their right sides facing Mecca. Uh, and they, they uh, did the DNA, <coughs> said that these people were from northern Africa, meaning more, more than likely Berber people. Mm -hmm. um, the, the good thing is that they didn't have any destruction, any damage, any evidence of combat injuries to their bodies, uh, it, it meaning that they lived and died peacefully in France. Uh, so the question is, uh, can you talk, elaborate about uh, what you know about this case, what historians believe about the arrival of these Muslims in France and the arrival of Islam uh, as a religion? Okay, Bismillah Yeah, it's not actually, it's not surprising, this uh, discovery, because, uh, you know, when the Muslims, they came to uh, conquer Spain, they didn't stop at Spain, right? So they, they, they continued, they kept going into the south of France, mm. and they conquered the south of France, and it was in the 8th uh, century. Mm. And uh, they ruled uh, this part of France for uh, but a few years, you know, like three, three years. And uh, then they were stopped in uh, the famous Battle of uh, Poitiers, we say in French. In, in, in English, they say uh, the Battle of uh, Tours. Tour. Yeah? Uh, this is where, where the, the Muslims were stopped, and then they started to to come back, basically. This uh, location of this battle, is it about 300 kilometers south of Paris? Yeah, exactly. So that's fairly, that's in significantly inside of modern yeah, France territory. Yeah. They say it's almost like half of France, basically, mm. almost, yeah. Um, so th that was in the 8th uh, century. Then we have also some uh, presence of Muslims in the uh, 16th century, where the Ottomans, there the was a war called the Italian War, and uh, the Ottomans, they had like uh, um, an, alliances, an alliance with uh, the French. 
to fight against uh, the Holy Roman uh, Emperor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so they were there in, uh, in the south of France too, in Nice, for example. Mm. And even uh, for the occasion, they took like one church and they made it uh, a, a mosque for the Ottomans to be mm. there. So this is uh, historically, yeah. But like the, the modern presence of Muslims in France mm -hmm. is more due, uh, it comes back to the 70s, 8 or 60s, 70s, where uh, France had this economic boom in growth and they needed workforce. So they took the workforce from uh, the old uh, colonies. And it was the same case for uh, you know, uh, UK, for Germany. And uh, all colonies were mostly North Africa, Algeria being the most, uh, like, the, the first country in terms of number of people mm -hmm. who came, and uh, West Africa. And uh, so when they came, uh, at the beginning, the plan was you come, you work, make some money, and go back to your country, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even they, they didn't aim to stay over there. But then they went there, and they stayed, and they brought the families, and the kids started to, you know, grow up in France, mm -hmm. and they finally, uh, you know, remained uh, uh, Brother there. Uh, on that point, uh, the Muslims in, uh, in France, like you said, uh, from North Africa, and you mentioned Algeria, like yourself, yeah. uh, what's France's involvement in Algeria before the Algerians came to France? You mean before uh, the, the occupation of during the France colonization? In yeah. Algeria, yeah. Yeah, they they had like a uh, 130 years of colonization okay. in Algeria, and uh, it has uh, a lot of uh, of course bad impacts. Yeah, they really fought uh, the Arabic and Islamic culture, and they really tried to get Muslims out of this. Yeah, and um, but you know the history w wanted or Allah wanted that you know the the Algerian they started to revolt. And we had this uh, eight-year uh, war, and they finally get colonization. And but even after that, you have still a strong relationship between uh, the countries, mm -hmm. in terms of you know economy yeah. and also political relationships. And the fight okay. for like freedom in Nigeria, I believe that maybe more than one million. Martyrs yeah, they call it the, the 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 country of one million mart martyr mm -hmm. martyrs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mil uh, million shahid they call it. I, is that why uh, some of the biggest populations in France, Muslim population in France, are uh, Algerian number one? And then you have some Moroccans, some Tunisians. Is that is that? Yeah, reason? exactly. And I, Algeria was really specific because uh, you know, like Morocco, Tunisia, it was a like colonies, mm -hmm. but Algeria it was actually a part of France. They considered as like a region of France. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it was a very s particular um, status in this regard, and that's why, uh, yeah, most of uh, I mean, this is the first uh, immigration country the Muslims are from. Yeah. Okay, very interesting. Uh, also, Brother Mahdi, uh, do you have any kind of numbers? Uh, I know this is, an, uh, when we talk mm -hmm. about numbers, all is politicized, uh, as Brother Ali tells us. But yeah. the numbers of Muslims in France, do we have any estimate hmm. percentages or numbers? Of yeah, yeah, we, have, we do have. It's, it's difficult, actually, mm -hmm. especially in France when, you know, the law forbids that you take a census based on religion. Okay. You no, know, it's not like, you, it doesn't work like this in France, you know, it's very... Secret. I have a problem with religion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's more on surveys, and the numbers that uh, are being said is like three, four million people, mm -hmm. uh, which is about maybe uh, six, seven percent of the population. Subhanallah. Yeah. Um, this is in terms of uh, Muslim population, uh, but in terms of religion, you know, France is is really specific. It's one of the most atheist country mm -hmm. in uh, in the world. Actually, it's not like you know UK or you have like a more Christian, you know, God bless the Queen and so on. <laughs> <laughs> in France, it's not like this. Yeah. Uh, in France, uh, you have one third of the people, they say that they're atheists. Okay. One third of the people, they say, I don't have a religion. Or maybe they believe in like a powerful thing, mm -hmm. um, but they don't have a religion. So you have like two thirds of the Muslims, be of the French people, who don't have uh, a religion, yeah? uh, which is uh, very specific to, to France. Two thirds. Yeah, two thirds. Yeah. They don't declare a religion. Yeah, they, they don't affiliate themselves. It's religion. very significant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'd like to ask you about political participation. You know, we've been watching the number of Muslims voted into uh, the legislature and different bodies in the British government increase. Uh, it's been very stagnant in the United States with only two members of the U.S. Congress. It's been that way for in the past, uh, uh, we're approaching 10 years now. Uh, uh, having people in government, especially lawmaking bodies, is very important because you know, in, it, we could potentially have people that reflect the needs and interests of Muslims. Uh, getting rid of or imposing a ban on hijab, uh, the burkini thing, uh, having the adhan, uh, f sources of funding is a, is a big issue in the French government in terms of um, allowing or not allowing 
foreign sources of, of funding to fund the Islamic uh, centers and masjids and to pay the salaries of the imams and so forth. What about the uh, political participation of French Muslims in lawmaking bodies and in government? Uh, yeah, you, you do have a participation, but you don't have like uh, a Muslim community participation. It's not like hmm. you don't have a strategy hmm. and with the leadership saying we're going to vote for this person or for this person. Uh, mostly it's just, you know, the Muslim uh, preachers, hmm. so to speak. They actually called people from a, a decade or from you know, the, the new generation of Muslims to get active in, uh, in political uh, activities and so on and so forth. Hmm. But you don't really see, like, uh, a Muslim strategy in this regard. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So would you identify that as a need uh, in the Muslim community, a French Muslim community, to become more politically active? I don't know because it's uh, like a, a two, uh, you know, a two-side story basically. Mm. Because uh, some people they try to get involved in this uh, in this regard, and they en end up with the conclusion that you know maybe they start to make too many concessions about mm -hmm. their religion, mm -hmm. and uh, are they really winning at the end of the day? You know, mm. um, and also you see that maybe when you have economic power. This is actually more powerful than maybe just getting some uh, political participation. Mm. And this is also related to the fact that when you don't have a leadership, this political participation will be very weak, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the problems that we have in France is that we really like uh, a strong leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some organizations that, that, has, uh, that have been set by uh, the government, but they are not uh, really, uh, I mean, Muslims don't feel represented by them. And uh, we feel people who are, you know, are strongly uh, have a strong background in Ayn, like in knowledge, Islamic knowledge, and at the same time, you know, uh, a good education background, and that have the the skills and the capacity and the will to lead the Ummah. We we are really lacking in in this regard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mahdi, the uh, on that note, I want to ask a question because in Europe, um, the biggest population of Muslims is in France, yeah. but yet, uh, excuse my <laughs> me being so direct. Uh, the Muslims in France are the ones who are most abused. Yeah. Uh, why is that the case? I think uh, the, there's two reasons. The, the first one is France is really is really specific, and the, the relationship with religion is really specific. Actually, France in, in history, in their mind, they started to be developed and they started to you know develop be developed scientifically when they started to revolt against religion, okay. against the church. The age of enlightenment. Yeah, exactly, yeah. The, the age of enlightenment, exactly. And th that was against like a reaction to, to the religion. Mm -hmm. So in the mind of uh, most of the French population, uh, there's this uh, violent conflict on religion. Mm -hmm. And that's why you know, they came with uh, this idea of secularism, when it's basically, you know, uh, we don't have any religion now. And uh, I mean, Theoretically, they should be, you know, respect other people, and I mean, we have just uh, some freedom in this aspect, you know, we have to be honest. But my point is um, that, yeah, you have this relationship. So uh, I I it's, it's hard. Okay. The French context is hard. And the second reason is, as I said, the Muslims, they are not organized, you know, we, have, we, are, we are divided. Uh, we start to, you know, have some projects here and there. But as I said, you don't have uh, a global or like a, a community strategy, basically. Mm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, so I see like maybe a difference between French people and American people, like the problem which happened with Trump and the Muslim ban against Muslims. You know, we, we had some Americans, they, they sympathize with Muslims. And this is for like, because Muslims are blended in with the society. But why is it like not like this in France? Like, why aren't the Muslims blending? between mm. like the societies and Like so. integrating more, yeah. more deeply into French uh, society. Uh, what's <laughs> stopping them? Are, are, are some of the French people sympathizing with the Muslims? Yeah, they do, of course, yeah. They you do. have, uh, you know, especially in academic, you know, researchers, mm -hmm. uh, they, they do see that, you know, some, it doesn't work like that, yeah, and it's not mm -hmm. uh, what freedom is about, basically, and we have to defend uh, the rights of anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have this sympathy, but on the other side, you have uh, the media that really, you know, are pushing against this Islamophobia and even the state, actually. You know? One, one, one uh, well-known case from 2015 was, uh, you remember the uh, cha attack against uh, the office of Charlie Hebdo? Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. The same day, uh, attackers also went to this Jewish supermarket and uh, they were, you know, opening fire on innocent civilians there. There was a Muslim there from Mali, mm. uh, Lasana Bithli. He was a young, uh, like a 25-year-old, and he defended the Jewish uh, uh, citizens who were shopping. And as a result of it, the prime minister granted him citizenship. And so that was a great case in terms of uh, putting a human face that people could relate to in French society, uh, defending, protecting Jewish, a, fr 
a, a, a Malayan Muslim protecting the lives of Jewish uh, French Jews. Uh, and so that was a great uh, uh, story for, for the, the case of Islam and Muslims in French society. Did you hear much about that? No, or this is a, you, you said it all, Yanni. Brother Ali, I, I want to ask you a question here. Mm. Coming from the other side of the globe, uh, from France, how do the Americans, uh, even the Egyptians, how do they view uh, the French government and, and <coughs> the French institutions, their relationship with the Muslims? Because you mentioned all these things right at the beginning, the Charlie Hebdo, the Burkini, you mentioned all these different attacks. How do the Americans view the French? Uh, well, uh, you know, uh, there's this uh, historic um, relationship between uh, French, uh, France and, and Britain and the Norman conquest. We were joking about mm -hmm. that earlier. Uh, you know, the United States is a very close and strong ally of both countries, France and, the, and Britain. Uh, but uh, the United States is a daughter of Britain. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, 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 I mean, I've, I, we have many uh, French uh, uh, dual, uh, many Americans who have dual citizenship between the U.S. and France, uh, and uh, there's a, a great widespread respect for French people, French culture, uh, and in most foreign affairs issues. France and the United States are on the same side of the issues. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I want to turn to something that you said. You were talking sure. about the Enlightenment um, and the abuses of the Catholic Church in particular that sure. led to Enlightenment, uh, the Protestant Reformation uh, before that. Uh, was it the French uh, f uh, uh, intellectuals and philosophers that were, that were leading? Uh, were they playing a leading role in this? Well, I think so, but I, I, the, the question here is why France specifically? Because that mm -hmm. happened throughout Europe. It happened also like in other countries, not mm -hmm. only France. The persecution of Copernicus, uh, of Galileo, uh, all the scientists that they tried to like come up with new ideas that are opposing the church. But the, the, the question which is bugging me most of the time, like why France specifically? The Enlightenment went through all of the mm -hmm. Europe. Mm -hmm. So w why was it so vicious in this? regard why and so mm -hmm. do you have any idea about this project? I don't know no. but another I pressing question that we've mm -hmm. had is until this year mm -hmm. uh, there haven't been many attacks in Britain mm -hmm. there have been a, a large proportion uh, a disproportionate number of attacks in France mm -hmm. and we were b we've been scratching our heads trying to figure out why France why France why so many attacks in France uh, three this year in the UK w what is your opinion why is uh, I mean the French government is saying one thing, the people have a different view. H how do you come down on? No, well, when you go on, uh, you know, seeing uh, facts, you see that the people who do this uh, act or these attacks, most of the time, there are people. You know, yesterday they were like uh, dealing drugs mm -hmm. and uh, you know being with women and uh, drink alcohol, and they just shift in like in one day and they started to you know go for jihad basically in France. Mm -hmm. You understand? So the problem is more uh, social. You know, those those guys, they are not the guys that go to mosque. They're not the, the guys that you know were raised uh, in an Islamic conservative family. They are marginalized, maybe. Yeah, they exactly, don't have exactly. Uh, jobs. So it's uh, of course. I mean, it's it's not just about social, but the the main point is social. And I think it's uh, actually a very important point to say because you know when you have debates in Europe, people, uh, a lot of people like intellectuals or journalists, they want to put the the the, the problem on the religious field. You know, we have to bring the debate on the right field. The right field is social conditions you know when you create ghettos and you put people uh, with uh, you know in, a, in an environment where there is bad education uh, bad you know economic employment for example or social condition uh, you're going to have uh, problems afterwards you understand so uh, le let's be you know uh, critical about this and not just follow where people just you know take us basically they take us to religious so we start to defend no the problem is more is more on the social field. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. I, like, I like this time between you know, politics and like separating it betwe between religion because you know one of the political scientists who was an American political scientist he had a book called Dying to Win, and he was analyzing like the countries that witness suicide bombers, and used to see like the high numbers and the even the existence of this happens only in countries that have certain characteristics. These are the countries that have military bases inside the countries of these people who are bombing mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So, the, and when you remove these military bases, nothing happens. Mm. So okay. he had this correlation and he's trying to even convince, the, like he's American, he's trying to convince American people and the American government 
this is actually this like a blowback, or it's like a, it's mm -hmm. not a justification, of course, of, of any like attack, but mm -hmm. it's a blowback. So watch out what you're doing, interference mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so on. And so forth. All right, on that note, we're going to move over to our report. Then when we come back, we're going to continue talking about France. But we're going to focus a bit on the social conditions, like you said, uh, Brother Mahdi. So, dear viewers, let's move over to a short report talking about the same issues here, about unity, brotherhood, and also France. When we come back, we'll continue with our discussion. And please don't forget, our phone lines are open. You can choose any of those two numbers across your screens. Call us, inshallah ta'ala, and give us your questions, your comments. If you're from North Africa, tell us about your experiences. What did France do in your countries? What have they left behind? Give us your thoughts. And at the same time our skype account is open as well that's huda underscore tv so please do join us we'll see you all in a couple of minutes in his name we die. Here and there. Allah, Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wassalamu rasulullah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh my name is kamran and i'm recording this video regarding my experience of uh, ramadan this year uh, this year ramadan has been quite difficult in london because the hours that we are fasting are very long. Uh, it's the longest hours we actually had, we have ever, I think. This year would be the longest fast. So it's been very difficult in the sense that it's been quite tough on the body because it's so long. And the secondly, also, it's been very hot this year in London. The temperature normally in London is not, uh, generally speaking, around the whole year. It's under 20. Uh, but this, this Ramadan, subhanAllah, has been 25 degrees. And that's normally most, most days. So we get very tired and very thirsty uh, But Alhamdulillah Allah makes it easy He makes the fasting easy And obviously you, you benefit a lot by fasting Obviously and you feel it more So that way you experience more connection in this month So one of the main reasons why it's been difficult as well Is because when we start our fast is around 2.40 in the morning So we don't get much sleep also And then obviously our fast is breaking at yeah, We're doing iftar at, at 9, 9, 10 past 9 So it's very very long hours but alhamdulillah it's it's not too difficult uh, with regards to the uh, last 10 nights um, that we can benefit inshallah uh, obviously it's encouraged for us to read a lot of quran and to make the most of praying at night and also to make a lot of dhikr uh, many people did not realize that they can easily bypass all this uh, reward uh, subhanallah they can gain a lot of reward in the last 10 nights especially laylatul qadr because you're getting reward of uh, a thousand months so, for example, if we were to say, you know, send ten, send ten, the Prophet said, if you send blessings upon me, uh, I will then Allah will send ten blessings upon you. It's a hadith. So, if we say Allah Muhammad and Nabi Muhammad, maybe a lot more in these last ten nights, then we will have maybe multiple more blessings falling upon us. Or, for example, if we make a lot of adhkar, for example, like la ilaha illallah wa ilaha sharik, ten times, the Prophet said, it's like you freeing four of the slaves of uh, of, of the family of Ismail Islam, who are the best. Uh, a most noble family to uh, in, in in our in our in our in our life so subhanallah we should try and encourage to do more car more spending charity and a lot of other virtues uh, and in his name we die here and Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, the viewers, after watching a short report about Ramadan in London. But let's get back to our discussion. We've got Brother Mahdi with us here in the studio, and he's talking to us about Muslims in France. Uh, Brother Mahdi, if we can turn to you, um, I want to talk about something very important. You said leadership. There's so many Muslims in, uh, in France, but you mentioned there's a lack of leadership. Why is that the case? Uh, I, I think that <coughs> the problem is that... Um, you know, because of the, the pressure that you may feel, sometimes you start being just trying to just succeed for yourself, right? And you don't have maybe this community, this strategy of community. That's one reason. And the second reason is that we, do, we didn't have the, you know, the, the concern of seeding people, learning their religion and coming back and being leaders. Mm. So what happened is that uh, we, we have this uh, lack of religious leadership. And th this is actually a, a pity because you know, Muslims, they have skills. There are a lot of, uh, when you go to business centers in France, it's uh, f packed <laughs> by Muslims, you know. Uh, we have money, a lot of money. The, the economic power is, uh, is actually amazing in France, you know. Like the halal meat industry is like 5 billion euros. Mm. Uh, the Hajj industry is over 250 million euros. So uh, Muslims have money, they have skills, and we just need this leadership, which is actually really uh, important because, I mean, you know, the media, they, they, won't, they won't change, you know. I mean, uh, it's not like one day they will wake up and you will turn off your TV or you know, take the newspaper, they will tell you, 
big news, you know, Islam is the truth. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen. So, uh, I mean, just being al always feeling as uh, victims and we are weak and so on, I think it's, it's really bad. So, but when we took this responsibility of, you know, sending people, trying to get people uh, to take the leadership, then we can, you know, use all these skills, economic skills and professional skills into uh, a goal and be strong. And when you are strong, then, you know, they think twice before, uh, before uh, yeah. trying to discriminate, basically. Uh, Brother Ali, do you, do you think that uh, the French Muslims could, could draw some lessons from the civil rights movement in, in the U.S.? Hmm. Uh, well, we were talking a little bit about this earlier. I think uh, political participation uh, is something that Muslims have to think very seriously about in non-Muslim countries. Uh, because how else can the government respect uh, their needs and interests if people aren't sensitive and they're, they aren't in government? If, if you have non-Muslims who are anti-religious uh, or a-religious uh, and uh, are, there's been also a lot of talk in the past three years about the nature, the root of all this uh, um, uh, backlash against the Burkini, for example, uh, the immigrants from various Muslim majority countries into France and other parts of Europe is about, col is, uh, about uh, maintaining a certain French identity what it means to be French, a, 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 a concerted, concerted effort to preserve Frenchness. Uh, wh wh what about that? Do you, what, do you th what do you think about that? Uh, it, do you think that that's behind? Is it anti-Islam or more about preserving French identity? Yeah, that's actually a very good question. <coughs> uh, it's, it's true that sometimes you feel that it's just a reaction, basically. And it has been pushed by you know, political parties. The, uh, this whole idea of Frenchness. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that the population, they don't, you know, uh, they are not concerned with it. I'm just saying that, you know, this is the politicians that, you know, when you, when you have economic problems and you have no solutions, you have, uh, you have to try to find something to, you know, just to boogie. divert. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you just divert and try yeah. to find, you know, but are, are they really French or not? You know, when actually, you know, Muslims are just part of the society. I mean, it's not even a question. The question of integration is of the past. You know, they don't have to integrate. They just say, as you know, I, I'm as French as another person, and uh, I don't have to excuse myself, you know, to be French. Mm. So, uh, yeah, but it's true that because of the media and the politicians, and uh, and also what you know, you, you the, the like international uh, uh, news. Obviously, m m French people they may feel concerned about what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We we felt uh, you know really concerned on the beaches of Nice. Uh, this place where the sister, we had all this video and photographs of her being th threatened by police if she didn't, you know, reveal some of her skin. You know, wow. she was covering herself up in an in in Islamically modest way. They were saying, no, we, we don't respect that. We want you to reveal your... Forcefully <laughs> removed her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were threatening her with a ticket. Uh, she was on the beach covering herself. So I, w I would like to have a question. What if she was a nun? Right. Maybe that would answer the question. <laughs> you were asking. Yeah. Brother, uh, Brother Mahdi, uh, you touched upon uh, religion and you touched upon uh, preachers. Uh, I, I want to know, do your preachers in France uh, <coughs> represent the Muslim community? Because many a time we hear them give fatawa uh, uh, verdicts that are very surprising. You know, how can somebody of that stature say something like this? Yeah. Do they represent the French people? Uh, it depends on the kind of pressures. You have, you have different categories. You have the pressures that is basically put or really linked to the state, and uh, this pressure uh, is not being you know, seen as representative of the Muslims. Yeah. But then you have some pressures, whatever the tendencies are, that actually go on the field and uh, go on the field, you know, the lectures on the field and are in relationship with the Muslims, actually. Mm -hmm. And those are more uh, seen as being a representative, yeah. Okay, all right. And uh, another thing very common these days we find in the UK as well as actually around the world now, uh, that if there is a difference between maybe some of the preachers or other groups amongst Muslims, uh, the word terrorist or extremist is thrown about very loosely just to divide communities. Mm. Do you find that also in France where people will use that to divide people and to stir up hate? Yeah, of course, but mo I think more the, the extremist word than the terrorist, yeah. Terrorist is like a, a big word, yeah. Um, uh, obviously, yeah, uh, you know, it's like you have the good Muslims and the bad Muslims, basically. And if you want to be accepted, you have to be on the good Muslim side. 
which is like the, you know, the, like a, a Muslim without too much Islam, basically. And uh, yeah, this can, you know, put some uh, tensions then, yeah. Okay. So, so when it comes to discrimination and somebody's, many of the Muslims are pushed to not to like show their identity, like in schools. Yeah. What I know is in schools, the, you cannot wear hijab, for yeah. instance, and so on. So is there like any alternative for the Muslims to, do they have alternatives like religious schools, like something in th like this in France? Yeah, uh, you have actually uh, four, four ways of dealing with the school problem. The first one is you just send your, uh, your kid to uh, the state school mm -hmm. and s try to give him in parallel like uh, in Islamic education. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, well, what some sisters ha have been doing is just they take the hijab off before entering the, mm -hmm. the, the school. Um, the second solution that, uh, that some Muslims do is that they just put the kid in uh, Catholic private schools. Mm. Uh, because obviously, you know, it's more, uh, it's Christian, but, you know, uh, first of all, you can be more accepted, and you don't have, like, the, you have s some kind of strict moral values, you know, mm -hmm. they're not going to teach you homosexuality, basically, you know, which uh, it might happen uh, sometimes in, uh, in say, school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, then the third one is to, uh, to put your kids in an uh, Islamic private school. We, we're starting to have uh, good ones, um, but, you know, it's, it, it needs a lot of funding and also some experience that uh, sometimes we are lacking. Mm -hmm. uh, and also it's packed, you know, so uh, it might be difficult or expensive to find a, a place for your kid. And the last one mm -hmm. is uh, homeschooling, actually. A lot of brothers and sisters are just homeschooling the kids. I mean, not only Muslims, actually, mm -hmm. even non-Muslims, because, you know, they are very critical about the uh, school system in France mm -hmm. or the school system in general, you know, they say, uh, we don't actually teach our kids to love learning and uh, I don't want my, s my kid just to sit for eight hours in, in, you know, in, in, in the class. So uh, homeschooling has been uh, an alternative for quite a few uh, brothers and sisters, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to put a question to brothers uh, Junaid or Omar, as you <laughs> prefer. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, you know, brother uh, uh, Mahdi has <coughs> given us some uh, ways that French Muslims can uh, adjust to this environment. Uh, some would argue, don't go to France or non-Muslim wow. countries <laughs> to begin with and then you won't have to deal with all this. Hmm. What are your thoughts about that position? That's a very <laughs> heavy question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I think the answer is uh, multifaceted. Uh, for mm. example, uh, it's just my belief. In, in the UK, you'll find Muslims are very free to practice their faith. Mm. Uh, it's being very fair. You can pretty much practice your faith completely without any restrictions. Mm -hmm. uh, in the States, I think Muslims feel very similar. And hence, you find uh, American Muslims very proudly saying that they're Muslim and American at the same time. Mm. The same thing in the UK. You find Muslims saying very proudly that they're British and Muslim at the same time. Mm -hmm. But I'm yet to find a French Muslim mm -hmm. who says, I'm French and Muslim and proud at the same time, mm. even though he is French and he does carry the French citizenship. Uh, so I think that France with all due respect, is different compared to all the other faiths, mm. all the other countries. Because the crackdown of the French government against Muslims, mm. it, it, we can't just pretend to say it's just a secular state and it's trying to preserve its secular values. Mm -hmm. Because like you just said before about the nun, very obvious that the treatment that Muslims get is very different to any other faith. Mm -hmm. And they're not just attacking just simple aspects of Islam, they're attacking the fundamentals of Islam. Mm. So for example, a, a woman's right to wear hijab, yes. yeah. a woman being forced to remove clothing. This mm. is your fundamental, let alone Islamic rights, your fundamental human rights are being attacked. Mm. So hence, I don't know, maybe Mahdi mm -hmm. can add to that, but I haven't yet found a French Muslim saying I'm French and Muslim at the same time being very proud. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, some are, some are seeing, it, yeah, seeing it, but you know, it's also very conflictual like for the Muslim because when you come from the, like you are French, but you are from the colonized country at the same time. So it's like, yeah, I'm French, but you know, they actually killed my uh, grand, you know, this idea is, yeah. still, is still really present in, uh, in, in um, in the in the Muslim population, but I think it's, it's actually changing. You know, now they just you know feel okay with being both. Yeah, and, yeah. Mm. for a long time we had like pressures, basically say telling people you know uh, you can be both. You know, so okay. so does this mean this character that you just described for us, Jenny, um, is more cultural and not about a particular government that's in power? I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Yeah. I agree with that. So, so with this new incoming uh, government, uh, Martin Khan, uh, I believe his name is Macron. Yeah. Macron. Okay. Uh, we shouldn't expect to see any, e even any differences, any changes, no, uh, despite <laughs> the fact that his the position on the spectrum is just different. I think, especially looking at recent events where France went to 
Central African Republic mm -hmm. and the crimes they recently committed there, yeah. um, it's very difficult for people just to overlook and you know, uh, sit on a table and have a laugh. You know, it's, uh, these crimes are very evident and they're mm -hmm. in front of us and, and they do affect human lives. Yeah. Yeah. But what you're saying is, is really true. Actually, when you had the, this law against uh, the hijab, uh, all the parties, most of the parties, have an overwhelming majority from left to right, they were, uh, they were for the law. So, uh, as you said, it's not uh, an issue of uh, this government or this government. It's more like, um, it's very more, like, uh, more general than, than, than this. I see. Yeah. Uh, Mahdi, do, do, you have, uh, uh, do you have hope, then, uh, for Muslims in France that they can actually uh, mobilize and start representing themselves and, and move forward? Yeah, of course, of course, because, I, uh, as I said, you know, uh, with all those bad news, for example, Islamophobia acts actually decreased this year, uh, 2016, compared with the year before. Um, you know, Muslims are getting organized now, uh, and they are in all parts of the society. I mean, uh, for example, uh, just, you know, to, to, uh, to, to give examples, in uh, 2013, you had, like, the best nun in France was a, a sister with hijab. Mm -hmm. The best baker was a brother. So I'm meaning, like, in all the, you know, the, the, the field of the society, you have Muslims being here. And uh, as I said, this leadership, I think if it comes, it can really uh, make a, a good and positive uh, change. And this okay. is also about solidarity. I, I don't remember the name, but I, I think he was Algerian-French person after the ban of niqab, I think, in the beginning. And he said that oh, for yeah. any woman, she or can wear niqab, yeah, and yeah. I'm going to just put for in the bank. You can do, do it, and you just withdraw for the fine. Yeah, yeah, would yeah. you like to touch upon it? Uh, yeah, his name is Nikaz. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's what that's, uh, that's what you, you said basically. I don't have any comment. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, uh, brother, Ali, I want I want to ask you here. Uh, we've talked about so many different countries, <laughs> Muslim countries, or m Muslims living in non-Muslim countries. How important is it for us, or, uh, all of us, to talk about Muslims around the world, <laughs> to feel what the French or the Nigerians or the Americans are feeling? How important is it that we come together? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a reason why we're talking about uh, uh, France, and, uh, France and French Muslims in this show. Sure. Uh, because we see the wisdom behind it. Uh, it's important for our viewers, for ourselves. Uh, we have many viewers in various parts of the world who tune in live by satellite uh, and uh, hundreds more, uh, thousands more on uh, YouTube and Facebook. Uh, so it's important f for us to care, as you eloquently explained to us the hadith of uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, to care about the, the issues, the challenges, uh, and the successes as well of our fellow Muslims. Uh, so uh, this discussion about French Muslims, about Nigerian Muslims, about Indonesian Muslims, and all the Muslim world is a very important one to raise our awareness about who Muslims are, where, where they live, what the issues are, their successes and challenges, all this is very important. Okay. Yeah, so, so it's, a, it's a good thing that we're doing. Excellent. <laughs> uh, well, Omar, uh, we're running out of time, so very quickly, uh, you coming from the Arab world, mm -hmm. how do you see the importance of us yeah. once again talking I about this? I would like to, to add to what Brother Ali was Please. saying, something from the life of the Prophet, mm -hmm. may peace and blessings be upon him. When he said to the Muslims in the first immigration that there is a person, there is an emperor, that nobody is like treated unfairly in his land. He was the Abys Abyssinian king. Mm -hmm. So. Th that means we should have this knowledge to know where are the countries that treat us well, where are the countries that have so some problems. This is actually a son of the problem. Very nice. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> Brother Mahdi, you have the last word. Uh, what advice would you give to fellow French Muslims so that they can progress? Uh, I think that you, know, you have to always remember that as Muslims, we have actually the truth. Whatever the pressure are, this is we have the truth, and we have our responsibility, especially with Muslims in mu non-Muslim countries, is to you know give to this truth to other people, because they are waiting for it. A lot of people in France are converted, or they are just waiting for you know like a solution. Th they see that you know the West is going uh, nowhere basically, mm -hmm. and I think that we should use this opportunity of Ramadan to give dawah, because you know sometimes we, we, we don't know how to to introduce the topic of Islam how to talk about Islam, but when you have Ramadan, it's open, because you're going to talk about Islam anyway, because people will ask you, you know, what are you doing, why are you fasting? So I think we should really try to take this as an opportunity, uh, opportunity to give dawah and to talk about the, the us, like the principle of, of, uh, of Islam. You know, not just, don't just say, you know, I'm fasting because you know, I want to feel like the poor, mm -hmm. or because you know, it's good for health. Uh, also say, you know, I'm fasting because uh, this is what Allah wants uh, me to, say, to, to, to do, basically and uh, try to, to push on this uh, 
concept of God, because uh, I will finish on this. There were an, uh, a survey in an Islamic center in France. They asked converts, why do you, what did you convert? What was the main reason? Mm -hmm. So some say, you know, I know Muslims. Uh, some say, you know, I read this book. But uh, I was surprised. The number one reason was that actually the oneness of God, like the concept of God in Islam, mm -hmm. that's what put people into Islam. So we have to, to tell this to people and use, as I said, Ramadan as an opportunity to uh, save people from where they are now. Okay, excellent. On that note, we are going to conclude. I want to thank you all for turning up, Brother Omar, Brother thank Ali. So Special thank you to Brother Mahdi. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. alaikum Dear viewers, we've come to the end of our program here. What a beautiful discussion talking about Muslims in France. Like Brother Ali said right at the beginning, we could spend another hour or two talking about the situation in France, but suffice is the 40 minutes that we had together. Dear brothers and sisters, it's very, very important that we understand this conte context inside the religious realm, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told told us that the ummah is one body and if any part of that body is feeling pain then the whole body feels pain we are all connected and we must be aware of what is taking place uh, around the world let's think about something many of us Muslims around the world we have lots of differences we differ with one another on very silly or minute things but we have one book which is the Quran we have one final Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we have one Lord Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala what do we have to differ upon the challenges are great let's come together let's unite and inshallah ta'ala with unity we will see our strength my dear brothers and sisters I'd like to thank you all for tuning in and we will see you in our next episode so until then assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh souls prostrate to their creator with humbleness and piety and creatures do zikr all the time here and there humans are come on the late the kaaba while migrating birds stretch forth their wings finding their way by allah mercy here and Prophet advised us to travel, seeking knowledge, while exploring Allah's miraculous creations here and there. La, 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 la.